Good morning all. Uh, my new work area outside, just outside the back door, is going to have lights. Lots and lots of LED lights. And uh, I want some of them to come on when I walk out there. So I need a PIR switch. And uh, I've got three here, which I've bought on eBay at various times. I haven't seen this one with the attached wires on eBay recently, or this one which has this uh, detachable mounting foot thing. Um, but this one is still available and it's possible I might use this one for various reasons. But uh, I just wanted to have a look inside these things and see what uh, chips they're using. And also whether they're using uh, a relay or solid state switching. So let's start with this uh, round one. There are two screws there. So let's get those out. And uh, inside here we have a circuit board. Now there's clearly a relay on there. We'll have a look at that chip in a moment. There's the PIR uh, pyroelectric sensor or passive infrared detector uh, sat up on fairly long legs there. And the way this works is that you've got this dome which has multiple zones of Fresnel lenses or Fresnel lenses. Let's have a closer look at that. So here we can see the uh, little moulded lines there that create the Fresnel rings. And uh, so if you have a single source of heat, say the tip of my finger, what these will do is these will act as multiple lenses. So they'll throw a whole series of uh, images of that heat source into the inside of here. Now some will line up with this PIR detector and some won't. And so as that heat source moves, the multiple images of it will flick across this pyroelectric sensor. So what this thing is looking for is a sudden change. So this will go through some sort of integrator, a sudden change or is it a differentiator? I can't remember um, a sudden change in signal level. So if the circuitry behind this sensor sees a rapid change uh, increase or a rapid decrease in energy hitting this sensor, then it will trigger the relay, the timer relay will stay on for a period of time. Um, the CDS there, the cadmium sulfide, it's marked as CDS, it's, that's the chemistry, cadmium sulfide. It's a light dependent resistor, LDR. That stops the circuit working if the light level is above a certain amount so that the, uh, the unit doesn't trigger during the day because typically you want these things to trigger when it starts to get dark if you're turning on lights, for example. Right, let's have this PCB out and uh, we can take a closer look at the circuitry uh, on this board. Right, let's start with the IC because the circuitry on this board is probably um, just straight out of the application note uh, from the data sheet. And it is a CS9803, so let's get a data sheet for that. Right, here's the data sheet for the CS9803. Um, there's a little picture of a chip here with LP8072 on there, so I presume they're compatible. Um, the CS9803 is a passive infrared controller, analog mixing, digital design, triac or uh, CMOS chip, triac or relay, depending on the user's choice, noise immunity technique, most stable PIR controller you can find on the market. Uh, lots of talk of op amps, first stage op amp input, uh, first stage op amp output, and so on. Let's go to the second page. Now, there are two application notes here. This one uses the triac output and looks uh, like it's using AC to me because there are components connected into the zero cross detect input. Um, this one is using the relay output. It looks like uh, there's a DC input here, or it could be AC. Although the bridge rectifier has no smoothing capacitor on the output of it, which is slightly odd. So maybe they're just using it to ensure that the incoming DC is just flipped around the right way. Um, I think in both cases, the um, PIR connections, the CDS, the LDR connections are all pretty, and some sort of filtering here for the various op amp stages um, are all identical between the two applications. So. We're interested in this one here because this is a, a DC implementation of this circuit. Uh, relay is here, a little transistor driving the relay, a little diode across the relay to quench the back EMF 
uh, when that transistor turns off. And it looks to me like they've mostly copied their application note, although the bridge rectifier here with the four dials, they've only fitted one, uh, which you don't need four, do you? We only need um, an anti-reverse polarity diode. There's a link wire going across there. Some of the capacitors haven't been fitted. But uh, yeah, essentially this is a DC implementation of the passive infrared circuit, and it has a relay. Now, how well that'll stand up to use outdoors I don't know. It is in this um, container, but of course it's not completely, well, it's not, not waterproof at all, is it, with that big screw slot cut out there? Hmm. Right, let's move on to this one, which just says TD, and there's some Chinese on there. Uh, how do I get this one open? Ah, okay, just lever the front off. Ah, okay, the circuitry is all on the front if I can get that out. Uh, oh well now that looks very very similar. What's the chip? Right it's the CS9803 again so I'm thinking this is going to be virtually identical and it looks virtually identical. Uh, we've got some capacitors missing there. We've got a single diode where there is our markings for a bridge rectifier little link wire there to uh, link that into circuit. Relay again. Two pots. Yes I mean it looks to all intents and purposes identical to the other one just in a different uh, form factor case. I just want to take that PCB out though to check whether the um, CDS, the LDR, the light dependent resistor is actually fitted. Uh, yes it is, there's the PIR uh, detector and there's the uh, LDR, the CDS, the cadmium sulfide light dependent resistor. So yes this one will only activate in the dark. Right, so let's uh, refit the cover onto this, and then we'll take a look at the third one, um, which is, oh, did I get that connector in there properly? Possibly not. Oh, I don't know. Maybe that's how it's meant to be. Right, now let's take a look at this one. Now, this one I've already um, used. Well, I've got another one of these outside um, operating a LED um sort of rectangular security light and i know that this one doesn't have a relay and in fact when it's supplied it doesn't have um the L ldr either the light dependent resistor so this is a much simpler thing and instead of a relay it's got a couple of mosfets so we'll take a look at that in a moment now this one also uses a different pir chip this one's the bisss treble zero one, um, it's a PIR chip that you see a lot in these sensors, although not uh, so much in these particular three. So um, on this board down here, we have 12 volts in and the switched output out. And there's a regulator here, which is a 78L05. So that's dropping it down to five volts. And my guess is that it's only putting five volts uh, ground into this uh, circuit board and then there's going to be a switched output here somewhere which goes back drives these MOSFETs and that makes the switch connection between input and output on that board. Right so here's the data sheet for the BISS uh, treble zero one 16 pin IC. You see this a lot um, in battery powered uh, devices and that's because it's a micro power PIR motion detector we're using low power CMOS technology. Um, we do also have an application note for this one. It's very sim similar to that other chip. Um, interestingly, the passive infrared sensor is marked DS and G. So is that drain source and gate? Is it essentially a FET? Uh, is that how it works? I've never really looked into those things. So lots of um, sort of biasing components, um, pulse detection, and I don't know, short pulse elimination probably. And uh, there'll, be, there'll be also some components here for timing for the relay. That's probably these capacitors here. And there'll be vari variable resistors somewhere on some of the implementations uh, of this circuit. This one shows a relay, but the one I'm looking at actually uses uh, MOSFETs there. We'll take a look at those in a moment. But yes, I mean, essentially it's doing the same job. It's just looking for rapid changes or, or, or large changes on this sensor and if it sees a large swing either to the positive or to the negative it will switch on a timed output and using this MPN transistor 
uh, turn on the relay. Uh, right, so the switching uh, MOSFET here is this 09N03. This one is a DTU make. Now these two MOSFETs are actually in parallel despite their rather strange uh, positionings on the board. You can see that the gates are connected together. So are the drain tabs and so are the source connections around there. Uh, so let's take a look at the spec of that MOSFET. Uh, so here it is, it's an N channel, 30 volt drain to source max when this thing causes switched off. Uh, MOSFET, and what are they saying for currents? They're saying drain current, uh, 65 amps, theoretical, totally heat synced um, with a gate source of 10 volts or 55 amps with 4.5. So if you're using it sort of at logic levels, 55 amps. But this little uh, circuit, which has two of them in parallel, actually only says 8 amps. I think it's written on here. Yes, it is 8 amps. So they're only really rating these for 4 amps each. And that is, of course, because there's really no effective heat sinking on there. So the rating is really about how much temperature rise you want in these devices. Now, as well as needing um, a PIR switching device for the uh, work area outside, and I'm kind of favoring this device because I can get new ones of these on eBay. Um, I quite like the MOSFET switching as well. That's probably going to last longer than the relay switching. Um, but I also have a requirement for a PIR and a light at the front of the house because the local youth um, has decided to start playing Knock Down Ginger, which is where they uh, knock loudly on your front door. In fact, it's almost to the point where it's Knock Down Front Door. They thump on the front door like you wouldn't believe. Um, so I want some sort of light, initially just to pacify the wife. Uh, she just wants a PIR light. So I've selected a lamp. Where is it? Yeah, I'm going to use this one. Um, it looks like a 10 watt or 9 watt uh, cob LED in there. It looks uh, really well sealed actually with a big um, washer in there. So I think I'll use that. And I'm sort of thinking this one because this one looks like there's a vent at the top where the rain's going to get in. Rain will also get into this one um, because there are holes in here where the wires come out. Actually, they're at the top, aren't they? I could put some um, hot glue in there. Uh, there's also a, basically a hole there. But I could drill holes in the bottom of this so that if any water gets in, it will just run out and therefore not affect the PCB too much, hopefully. So yeah, I think I'm going to go for this one. It also has that round form factor. Okay, it's not a very good color match, but it's a shape match. And then, yeah, this one, which I can still buy uh, new ones of, I shall put at the rear. I've got a feeling this one doesn't come as standard with um, a CDS and a light dependent resistor but it's a relatively easy thing to fit it pretty sure those two unused pads there are for the cds um don't lose that screw do i ah faffing about oh i need to take this off oh that's uh no you can see cds written there and there are two unoccupied pads. So I'll need to fit a CDS. This one just doesn't seem to come with one. But uh, yeah, that's it for the moment. I just wanted to take a look at what was inside all these units, whether they're relay based or MOSFET based, whether they have the uh, LDR or not, and which one I want to use where. So cheerio.